Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to Deer Creek. And we've had a couple of bits of demo equipment turn up overnight for us to use on the farm in the next day or so. You can see in front of us a Mac RS700. Now this has come courtesy of BC Bueller. Now you recognize that name from the versatile and new Holland tract pack as well as the 65 foot Seedhawk air seeder and cart that he has worked on in conjunction with Ford Ag. Now I've been following progress of this truck a little bit on Facebook and uh, not quite finished yet but this is what he sent over for us to take a look at have a little bit of a play around with and test out so we're going to be using this today to run down to the cop pick up a little bit of seed possibly some fertilizer too uh, we'll see how we get on and the second piece of equipment over here is the rather large borgo air seeder now this is the 3320 the 23 meter wide version so a little bit narrower than our 25 meter wide or 84 foot Seed hawk we've been using, uh, but very, very comparable. And on the back there paired with it is the 7950 air cart. So uh, looking forward to putting these both to work in the fields and giving them a go. So we've got two fields of wheat to plant over in fields four and field nine where we had the horn. So we'll get this hooked up to the 9RX. We'll uh, go and organize some seed and some fertilizer and uh, we'll get things set up and underway. So we've just jumped into the cab of the Mac here get that started up but I thought I'd just show you some of the options that are available on this uh, there's a couple of different parts to it which is nice it's more of a pack it's not just a standalone truck so we're just going to take a very quick look at that in the shop not going to go through everything but just give you an idea on what is coming in the pack so it's called the Mac grain hauling pack and there's four parts to it so we've got a 6x4 semi there we've got the 700L grain truck with the dump bed on the back which is what we are using there's a grain pup trailer which will hook onto the back of this truck so you can run it in tandem and then there's also a semi trailer with the bottom hoppers on it as well so you can pair that with the semi so very very nice looking pack uh, we'll see how we go when we get to doing our grain hauling and we need to bring in a little bit of help we might look at using maybe the semi set up there or possibly running one of each and uh just get that to help us haul our grain and crops down to the sell point. I know we've got probably over a million litres to haul, so it's going to take a wee while to get done. But that is uh, just a very sneak peek there at what the pack includes. I'm not going to go through all of the different options that are in there. We'll save that for a proper mod review on it when it is ready for release. But anyway, we're going to jump in here. Nice looking interior. Very, very tidy. We're going to head down to the co-op. Now I did check the... Air cart, or our air cart, the Seedhawk one, did have some seed in it, but only 171 litres, so not worth trying to drag that out of there. We are going to go down and get a decent amount. Now we'll have a look when we get down there, we'll see how much we need from the uh, seed estimator, the field calculator, and make sure we get just enough to do that, because we don't want to have to drag a whole lot of seed out of that air cart before it goes back to the Borgo guys. We'll just get pulled in here into the bulk supplies area. Need to get the tarp opened up on the back but let's just take a quick look at that field calculator and uh, take a guess at how much seed we're going to need we're just looking here now when you first come into this it gives you all the lime fertilizer etc need to go down the bottom here to show seed consume because of less obviously every crop is a little bit different now actually we need to pick the field first so we need field four and we're just going to put some wheat in so we need just over six thousand liters in field four and then likewise in field nine Going to tell us we need three and a half thousand liters so that's about nine and a half ten thousand liters i think we'll pick up at least ten percent more so we'll probably grab about eleven or twelve thousand liters of seed today uh, obviously we can use it on other crops we are going to have to plant something come spring in the big field but for now uh, we'll just get what we need for this field and uh, get it back down to the yard so we are probably gonna to have to take a loan out we'll see how much seed we can buy with the seven and a half grand we've got Oh, we went far off nine and a half thousand liters with the seven and a half grand so we will uh, just top that up a little bit further we do need to come and buy some fertilizer as well we've taken an extra 20 grand that takes our loan up to two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars like i've said plenty of times we've got plenty of crop in the silos ready to sell when the price is right there we go twelve and a half thousand liters so we'll head down and uh, we'll get this put into the air cart and then we'll see about sorting some fertilizer out as well all right we're just getting the 9rx here out of the shed now we've parked the truck just around on the other side of the other shed against the field just to give us a little bit more space uh, 
not sure how the auger will work on the air cart. But we'll just get this turned around, backed up here into the toolbar, and hook these both up. There we go, get that one hooked up there, and we're already in the right position to get the air cart there hooked on. So, let's head on around the corner and get this uh, air cart opened up and start to get some seed put into it. Alright, let's press the button there to get the auger out. See that should open up the rear hatches now. I'm not sure which one's for the seed, whether it's the front or the back ones. Uh, but we'll try this one, and if it's not going to work in there, we'll have to swap it over. I have a feeling that the uh, larger hopper is for the fertilizer, but uh, we'll jump in the truck and find out. Alright, just getting backed in here. Uh, we do get a trigger there for the seed, so we must be on the right hopper. So we'll just uh, turn that on, open it up. We are using the grain door, which is good. See there, we are starting to tip. That's, uh, that's all going very nicely. Perfect, well we'll get this filled up and uh, then we we'll, should be able to go and get some fertiliser. Alright, well there we go, we've got all the seed into the air cart, so fingers crossed now that we have purchased enough. Make another trip down to the co-op and uh, we'll have to have another look at the field calculator and purchase our fertiliser using the same method and uh, see how much of that we need. Back here in the field calculator, field 4 needs 7,000 litres and field 9 is 4,000 litres. So 13,000 litres total there. I think again if we pick up maybe 15,000 litres and uh, we'll get that and see how far that goes in the field. We've got 16 grand to play with so we'll uh, see if we can actually buy that 15,000 litres or whether that money's going to go very very fast. And there we are, we've spent it all and we are 4,000 litres short. So let's top that line up by another couple of or ten thousand dollars and uh, get the last of that fertilizer purchased there we go fifteen and a half thousand liters of fertilizer uh, and not exactly sure what it ended up, ended up costing us total we had 16 grand and we've just spent another six so about twenty two thousand dollars so let's get back down again we'll finish getting the air cart filled up and i'm going to make a start on getting some of the fields planted and here we go all the fertilizer is in i'm just looking down the bottom corner we could only fit 16,000 litres of fertiliser in the air cart anyhow, so we actually did quite well, only getting as much as we need. So uh, we'll park this up, this is, uh, I'm really enjoying this truck actually, it is a nice little setup. The grain door there on the back, you can change the tip, so you do open the full doors on the back, so if you were dumping crop out or something like that, but for the purpose we've just used it for, as a seed tender, it was, uh, it was very good. So looking forward to uh, playing around with that a little bit further in the future. So with this all loaded up, I think we'll start our trek over towards field number 9, the one over on the uh, far right hand side of the map, and uh, make a start with wheat in there. I think the smaller field will be the better one to start off on. Make sure we've got everything set up and uh, see how it all goes before we get into the bigger field. So we'll meet you over there. Well, it's a big bit of kit and does take up a good chunk of the road, so fortunately we had our traffic turned off. Let's get in here into the field, get things unfolded, and uh, then we'll start setting up our passes, going around the headland once or twice before we do some up and down rows. Here we go, unfold animation on the toolbar there, very nice as you would expect. And this was a very well refined piece of equipment in FS19, so I can imagine the same standards that were applied to that have come across here to 22, and of course the addition of those fantastic sounds, the clunk as it folded out. So that's that all unfolded and ready to go. We've got wheat selected in our seed tank, so we'll just uh, head on over here, get things turned on. Here we are, that's wound up, you can hear the air system running. We'll just get in here towards the corner and uh, lower it down. Holds down in sections and you see the change in colour there of the ground, we're getting some wheat planted. Now this will need to oh, be the only uh, application of fertilizer we do need to do. I'm going to be too close to that telegraph pole. I am too. Now this is going to be troublesome. Might just have to fold up here and uh, re-line up on this edge. All right, I've done a better job that time. We've just done a loop and got lined up again. So get things lowered down and back underway. And what I was just about to say is this will be the only fertilizer we do need to apply because we had the... Uh, chopped straw fertilizer or the uh, chaff fertilizing coming out of the back of the combines so uh, all that chopped corn that went down on the ground has applied a fertilizer state to the field which is good so there we go we are up we are seeding so hopefully 
we're going to use about a third of our seed up and a third of our fertilizer up in this field. That will be about what I'd expect based on the size of the field compared to the other one and uh, leaving us enough to get field number four done as well. This nice piece of kit and uh, Sid Modding's 9RX up the front there pulling it without any dramas. Now it would have been nice to get his uh, 90, is it the 9020 and 9060 series that has just been released on Mod Hub would have been nice to have one of those to test out as well but uh, I thought we'd just limit our number of pieces of demo equipment that we have for this episode. Oops, a little bit close to the power pole. It's all right. We're giving the cedar back. It's not ours. All right, we've made it halfway around the field. We're running along the long edge here, which is our normal spot for setting up our GPS, and uh, nothing's going to differ today. So we've got our A and B point set there. Turn on the GPS, and uh, looks like we've got a nice edge running along there on the left-hand side. Uh, but like I said, this piece of kit is uh, running flawlessly. I'd expect nothing less. Uh, just like to say how nice it is that this has come out as a uh, free DLC. Obviously it was a paid content for FS19, so uh, nice to see, along with all the other bits and pieces, the Cabernet and Bicon equipment which came out uh, earlier with FS22. Uh, good to see some of that coming out as free DLC uh, in conjunction with some of the uh, paid DLC. So, I think that is a good point. We should jump into a little bit of a time lapse here on this field. Better to do a time lapse in this one than the big one, and uh, we'll get this all chopped out and planted and uh, move into the next field when we're done.
So there we go, last little section of this field and we are all done. Now looking at our seed and fertilizer, I think we are going to have more than enough for the other field. We uh, started off on 99% fertilizer, we've just hit 70, so we haven't even used up a third yet. And uh, our seed is looking very similar, I think we were about 66% full on seed, if I recall correctly. 12,500 litres, so we've used about a quarter of what we had. So there we go, all done. So that has gone uh, very smoothly, this uh, piece of kit is fantastic. Nice and quick, nice and efficient, and uh, gets the job done. So we'll get it folded up here, and uh, head on down to field number 4, and make a start down there too. So here we are, field number 4. It's not much different than the last one really, apart from the shape, but we're going to get in here and do all exactly the same. Now, I think we might set this up on course play for a little bit, and take the chance to put together a little montage, but before we do that, we will get everything unfolded, set up, and start running. Alright, there we are. Get that turned on. Lower down our first pass, and uh, make our way around the field. Now, it took a little bit. I have generated a course already. Had to tweak, just uh, play around with the field margins, have a little bit more of an overlap than I would have liked. Just to be able to generate two headlands, uh, I would have been worried if we only had the one headland around because it is quite difficult to turn this with just the one and we all know what course play tractors and course play drivers are like particularly articulated tractors trying to reverse something that has a uh, as many points of articulation as this does with the uh, drawbars and the pinched leading wheels there on the air cart so the less turning less reversing that we could do the better but uh, there we go we are up and moving so we'll carry on here for just a little bit we'll perfect we'll try and get around one headland pass and then we'll set the uh course play up to do the second pass and start work on the up and downs so here we are we've made it around the field once it took quite a while actually it is a much larger field than what we were just in certainly not as big as the one over the road though uh and i've overcooked that just a little bit we're just going to make course play not be too friendly with me but there we go I think there's no traffic or anything like that all right so with that all done we're gonna make a move over here and try and get this set up to run the next headland and uh, then we should be good to be able to get course play up and going all right and there we go we've got course play turned on at nearest waypoint and it has put straight up onto that headland pass so we uh, will be able to Leave the worker running here for a little bit and be able to grab a few shots for a montage. Put that all together and uh, just keep a bit of an eye here on what's being done. Now, we don't actually have anything else we need to go and do while we're doing this, so this is purely for the purpose of uh, putting together a little bit of a montage. Nothing else. Uh, if we had other work, we would go and do that, but uh, we don't. So we'll uh, make a start on the montage and catch up with you again soon.
made it across the field and all the way back and running down the last pass here so we've ended up probably not having to buy that additional seed and fertilizer and I did come to the realization halfway through that when you run over an area that's already been planted and fertilized it doesn't actually consume any unlike lime which you can uh, pretty much spread anywhere and it will keep just going down uh, the lime, uh, the fertilizer and seed doesn't so just demonstrate that when we get to the end of the row here we'll keep planting for a little bit and uh, we should see that the seed doesn't get used up so you can see we're counting down on the seed the fertilizer is going down when we get to the end here so the fertilizer doesn't stop but the seed definitely did telling lies there aren't i but it does make a difference there is uh no seed being used up when you're seeding over an area you've already done there you go just see it there just as i tidy up that little piece we didn't even need any seed to do that so uh, we've definitely got more than enough of what we needed anyhow which is good it's better this way around than having to top up so can probably put a little bit more faith into the field calculator for the seed now it's just a little bit up in here that Causeway struggled to do so we'll just tidy this up and uh, then get things folded up and back down to the yard all right so we are back here at the yard get parked up here we'll pressure washer out and give everything a good wash down make it nice and clean but uh there we go the mac there as well that's uh that's all gone very well it's been good to get that wheat planted uh, and good to be able to try out the borgo i didn't get much of a chance to use this in fs19 uh we ended up using the john deere cedar by custom modding and of course the anhydrous edited version by ford agriculture quite a lot so uh, not a lot of time on the ball go so good to be able to get these into this game and uh, have a trial of them they've worked very well and the mac uh, i do like this truck it's a uh, it's a very nice looking truck and very well modeled and uh, comes as a good package so i'm looking forward to putting some more miles on that and giving it a bit more of a play but i think that pretty much wraps up our work for autumn and uh the only thing we've really got left to do now is wait for the prices to increase on our crops that we can sell them so before we leave we'll just take a quick look at that and when we might be expecting to do that so it doesn't show up here in the prices list but we do have barley uh, grain elevator 256 dollars price is heating up uh, so we're in november next month is meant to be the peak so we might be looking at doing that we also have soybeans uh, they don't peak until june so we've got to hold on to those for a wee while before we get a good price for them. Then right down the very bottom is our dry corn. Now again, a little bit of a peak here in December, but the main peak is again in June. So that's very similar to the soybeans. We may even hold on to that, or we could look at selling some of our dry corn in December just to see how good the price is and how much of our debt we'd like to clear out. Uh, in fact, we might even see how far the barley gets with clearing that debt out. So that is going to be probably a task for an upcoming live stream, I think, if we can get a couple of trucks up and running and uh, drive around with a little bit of auto drive and ourselves doing that. It'll be a little bit of fun. We might end up with some weeds as well on those two fields we've just planted, so we may have to uh, may have to do something with those. It could be an opportunity to try out the uh, Borgo weeder as well. So there it is. It is over 27 metres wide, so uh, it could be worth trying that instead of spraying not too sure we'll uh, we'll see we'll see which way we go with that either way we do have the sprayer we can get there and do those weeds and we do know it doesn't take too long to get those all done and finished off so uh, something else to do but other than that we're going to leave the soybean gr ground uncultivated we're just going to let that uh, stubble and everything rot away into the ground over winter and be all ready to be planted into with some corn come spring so that is a perfect time to wrap things up for this episode. Hope you have all enjoyed that. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.